Now here are today's top stories in today's What in the World episode. Now this first story, I ought to have covered it a long time ago when it happened, but uh, better late than never. So when President William Ruto toured Burundi, we got to see images that depicted that the country was in a very, very dire economic state. Here you can see an image of President Ruto seated in a lounge in Burundi. You can see that the main coffee table is covered using a tablecloth, and the same thing goes for the stool that's to his right, which of course should be on your left. Also looking at President Ruto's face, he seemed to have been very displeased by something i don't know if it's the organization or what had happened but he seems to be very displeased also the burundian soldier that was flanking him was given a very large lanyard to wear on his collar making him look like a guest all the time when in fact he is a native of the country now here's what kot had to say about this entire fiasco walter robert said did afande have an afro when they were measuring his head for a kofia sos muruli said burundi ikosawa People should and must live within their means. If you come at my place and find me sitting on 20 liter jerry cans for seats, don't feel out of place. Just take your seat because that's what I can afford at the moment. I agree. Golden Burundi said, Burundi is recovering from numerous wars and internal conflict. We built bridges while you constructed skyscrapers. The priority was social cohesion, not economic growth. Now watch Burundi take off. Sami Kibiwot said, Looks like those rich uncles home of the 90s. On to the second story. During the Madaraka Day celebrations in Kenya, the Chief Justice of the Republic showed up in a very heavy machine. I think she even outdid the President, the Deputy President and everyone else. In this image you can see the Chief Justice's car, a Toyota Land Cruiser 300GR Sport with the number plates reading CJ1. This is such a unique number plate, only a confused police officer would dare stop this vehicle on the highway. But the issue here is the price tag of the vehicle. It costs a whopping 35 to 50 million Kenya shillings. Here's what KOT had to say about this same issue. The first fellow is called Nan Shareholders. <laughs> Interesting name. And he says, CJ Martha Koome is colonizing us by living opulently during these times of empty coffers. Maraga should not accept this. We cannot be celebrating 60 years of Madaraka from a white man while our fellow black men are recolonizing us. It should be scrapped off the list of holidays. Kaslim said, Kenya is rich. Martha Kome's new official ride, Toyota Land Cruiser 300GR Sport 2023, worth 43 million. It is said to be the only ride of such a kind in Kenya and Africa. Ahmed Abdullahi said, CJ Kome glitz and pizzas. Abuga Makori said Chief Justice David Maraga spoke about equity and inequality among state institutions in relation to defunding of the judiciary, which was frustrating delivery of justice. He used Dakar as an example to portray how the judiciary was struggling, but Martha Kome did this. So clearly not too many Kenyans were pleased about the price tag of the vehicle, but I'm not too sure if this was bought during her tenure or if it was bought during the days of David Maraga. That is the only bit that we do not know as at now. Though I doubt during the days of Maraga, Uru Kenyatta would have given anything nice to the Chief Justice. He basically blocked all funding to the judiciary because it nullified his 2017 election. Still on the topic of Madaraka, no opposition leader attended the Madaraka Day celebration. And that just goes to confirm what we've known all along, that there is serious bile between the incumbent government and the opposition. These guys do not seem to move hand in hand whatsoever. Even Mamangina Kenyatta, who has made a tradition of attending all Madaraka Day celebrations, for the first time, she skipped it. But for her, I can understand she skipped the function because of the ongoing feud between the incumbent government and her son. Now, number four, a government official in India was fired because while he was taking a selfie at a dam, his phone fell into that dam. And rather than abandoning the phone, he ordered that the entire dam be drained for quite a number of days just so that he can retrieve his phone. Now, when the national government learned about this, the fellow was sent home. One can only wonder what was inside that phone to the point that an entire dam has to be emptied just for one fellow to retrieve his or her phone. Now, that's it from us for today. We'll be back in the course of the week with more interesting stories. Now, do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube search for david wafula hit the subscribe button you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature if politics is something you're passionate about this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys adios
Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adiós.